it's lovely to see you. Welcome to um, my video series, In Conversation With. And um, for this episode, we have the very lovely Janine Worthington. Hi. And Janine is the chairperson of um, TABI, which is the Tarot Association of the British Isles. And she is also the creator of... Um, the in-between tarot, and we're going to talk a little bit about that and the theory behind it today. So, hello, Janine. Hi, Janice. Thank you very much for inviting me on your channel. Really appreciate That's it. That's right. That's an absolute pleasure. Um, so just tell us a little bit, first of all, give us a bit of your backstory. So what brought you into tarot and, you know, what was your in and what was your motivation? What What, what happened? So many, many moons ago, when I was a child, I found a pack of Thoth tarot cards underneath the floorboards at my mum and dad's house, so in my bedroom at home. So um, just digging about behind things, looking underneath things, and I had these wonderful cards, and I thought, oh, these are amazing. Um, and wanting to be more curious and find out about them. We used to go to Blackpool a lot, so on the Blackpool front, as you walk along, you used to have lots of gypsy fortune teller um, little shops where you could go in and have your tarot cards read, and I was always fascinated by those. I printed out a ride away uh, deck from one of those penny slot machines on, on one of the piers, I think, actually. So my first ride away was actually little paper cutouts alongside my Thoth deck. And then my rider, um, sorry, my uh, Astro Tarot deck by Russell Grant was a present from my mom and dad. So they were really cherished items when I was young. Um, I just started doing tarot and... Um, and doing tarot readings for other people. I was in the Navy for a couple of years, so my tarot decks at that time travelled around the world with me. And um, then I did some courses. Um, I was going up to Keswick, and I was teaching with the Tarot Association, Tarosophy at the time, so I was one of their trainers. Um, and then I come up with um, an idea for a deck of my own, so... Yeah, teaching tarot, reading tarot, um, and then just started to um, do some deck creation. Yeah, so obviously Thoth was your first deck. Yeah. And um, and for anyone watching the channel who who isn't familiar with with the difference, there are kind of two main systems in tarot. There's the right awake system, which is the sort of mainstream industry standard sort of system, and then there's Thoth was created as a rebellious act by Mr. Alistair Crowley, who didn't agree with um, some of the the decisions that have been made in the Right Awake deck. And it, it appears to me, or so it appears to me, that if you start off with Thoth, you kind of, that becomes your system. So what was it? Obviously, you found, and, and I love the fact you found it under the floorboards. That's so cool. Isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's like it's like a little hidden, naughty thing that's under there, and someone like secreted it away. And that's think, such a that's great. I think it was a, a family legacy. So I do think it, it was an uncle that may have left the cards behind, but I never got the chance to ask him because um, he passed. So. Um, they just got a big question mark around them. Um, wow. Uh, they're lovely. They're the, um, the, the ones from the 70s as well. They're quite a big deck. It's with the uh, the blue box. With the well. larger, larger cards. Yeah. yeah, the blue box. So um, they're a bit battered. Unfortunately, I didn't, my teenage self never looked after them as well as I should have because they could have been quite um, a collector's item now. But um, I've got a few cards missing from that deck, so I bought another one to replace it. <laughs> so, what what made you um, not go with the Thoth system and 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 migrate across to right away? Okay, so um, when I got the idea for my concept, and that was 2012, it came from a dream. So I love telling this story because it was the concept that was um, that was kind of played out within the dream. This is what you can do. This is what you should do. Connect the cards. Make the, the cards um, cyclic. 
have a connecting card, a liminal space between the two cards that joins one card to the next. And I woke up and I thought, oh, that is fantastic. But at that time, I didn't have um, any images in mind. It was only when I started to really draw out the concepts that I had an idea of what I wanted to go for and it wasn't based on of any other tarot deck so loosely around uh, the ride away and the numerology and everything and there's astrology in there however I wanted to have something completely different so I work with my dad who's a graphic artist um, and we came up with these images um, and I've got a I've got a prototype so this is a large one they're not this size but um mm. you can see the energy Lovely. of the high priestess moving into the energy of the empress and you've got the baby and the umbilical cord separate in the two areas so it makes it very clear that you're moving from one card um into the next um and this one's called twilight so all of those majors only cards um and that's the original deck because it's just a major only deck had titles yeah. so yeah they are not right away uh, standard, standard images it's what it looks like when the fool jumps from the cliff down into the energy of mm. the magician um again, that's that's the um the card size version of the high priestess um and the empress so um yeah very different from right away with titles at the top and no numbers on them. Okay, so um, very different. Uh, and I, I self-published that back in 2013. And I presented the concept at the Theatre by the Lake up in Keswick. So I had lots of tarot greats there who were presenting themselves, you know, who like just superstars. You know, Barbara Moore, I think, was there. Um, I think Kareen Kenner was there. She was either there that year or the year after. So, you know, all these people sat in the audience who were watching me present on this brand new concept in the tarot world. And I was a bit terrified. Um, and it got traction and I self-published, I printed. Um, and there's a book that went out with it as well with the, the backing of the Tarot Association. So what mm. happened then was a bit later, I think it was about 2000 and. 17 low scarabeo got in touch and they said we hear that you got an in-between tarot deck out we like the concept we've um published the after tarot and the before tarot and we hope that you could uh come in and do your in-between tarot so after i'd done that majors only the after tarot the before tarot came out and then i come back in again at 2017 and did the full 78 card deck so that's this one that's the the big kit edition yeah. what's right. different about this one though is that low scarabeo didn't want the titles at the top they wanted the, the the numbers and they wanted the um the card titles at the side okay right. so you've got the energy of the um of the emperor going through to the energy of the hierophant and you can see the astrological glyphs at the top for Aries and Taurus. Yeah. Um they did however want the um the name of the first card at the bottom. Okay, and I really didn't want that. I said no, it's an in-between card. It's not the first card, is it? It's, it's in the middle. Exactly. So I was getting <laughs> really upset, very passionate about it. Please I can't you can't do this because I'm like, what do you mean we can't do this? <laughs> We're a publisher. And like, okay, but if you do this and it takes and I didn't I didn't get it until the last moment what they were trying to get at with it. It's an index card. It's so you can reorder your cards. Right. It's nothing to do with the liminal space. So you still got okay. this as that liminal space, but when you try to put the cards together, it's really difficult with these on either yeah. side so this helps you just to reorder them so you, um it's interesting working with publishers because you you do have to compromise as well you um you're very lucky if you get everything your own way when you're um, doing a big project which you'll know yourself because you've got your your own cards um so yeah i love doing it should i share my screen so i can show you Yes, yes, please do. Yeah, because the images yep, are a little a bit a little bit sharper on the screen. 
Um, so I think you can see this. Hmm. Great. Go. Yeah, so that's better. Okay, um, what happens with the court cards is you have the journey for the same person. Okay, so um, we've got the page of ones to the knight of ones there. So it's how that person moves across um, into the next energy. And then it's the same person's journey from the knight into the qu uh, to the queen and then from the queen into the king and then from the king back round to the page again. Now, I've got different characters in each of those court card cyclic families and you can see them here. So we've got the, the first one for the fiery energy of the page. We've got a young graduate. And then we've got a suffragette for the coins. So it's the suffragette's oh. journey because uh, it wasn't anything about politics. It was more to do with the hard work ethic that they had to fight really hard for everything that they got, including the vote, their kids, yes. their money. Um, and then we've got, yes. um, yeah, yeah, and we've got an African family in the um, the cups. And then for the swords, we've got um, a feudal uh, tribal um, energy and it's the Romans and the Picts uh, many many years ago um, and that's to represent the sword energy and so yeah. rather than focusing on um, for example in the Rider way you've got the standalone energies of the king the queen the knight and the page I've decided to go for the energy so with the page, it's a starting energy. The knight is more in conflict. The queen is more an internal uh, union, uni um, unity energy. And then the king is more of a, an external mastering energy. Um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I will stop sharing. Beautiful. And were, and were they were these done working with your working with your dad? Was there was was this other was this bigger deck done working with your dad as well no so this one was working with franco rivoli who is an an italian artist and lo scarabeo um, gave me the option of two people that i could work with on the images and i wanted to work with the one whose artwork was very very similar to the original deck because I wanted to keep of those course, two yeah. concepts together. And there are three cards within the deck that are the same in both the Majors only and the 78 um, card deck. This is one of them. So I insisted on keeping this one. Yep. Um, the one yeah. with the baby, the Empress and the uh, High Priestess is the other one. Um, I'll find the, the other one for you in a moment. But this is what they look like when you move from the... The page to the knight to the queen. So it's that same person's journey, that f progression yes. through the courts. And then the final card, which is um, in my deck, is the the king back to the page. So it cycles back round again. That's lovely. That's really nice. I like the idea of a singular character moving through the different stages. That's really lovely. Yeah, and it's very different as well. So... Um, there were a lot of um, interviews that I was doing at the time, you know, a lot of workshops on how you can use them. Because for, for the king to the page, it could be about passing, handing down that legacy to a child or a grandchild. Or it could be um, because I do believe we move between lifetimes with the same energy families, you know, the same people, that you're taking yeah. all of those lessons learned into another lifetime and you're starting again. So you're going from the king to the page. And you're moving again with, with that energy and with those same energies around you. So the whole yeah. um, concept of the deck is based around cycles. Um, and I, I was on um, the International Meeting of Oracular Arts at the weekend presenting about bridges. And on the Majors Only deck, I have a bridge. Yeah. And on the back of the 78 card deck, I have an Ouroboros so, um, oh, yeah, which is just ca kind of putting in concrete, you know, that, that it's cyclic. We're ongoing. Yes, yes. These decks are about cycles. Yeah. It makes it, um, and I, I originally wanted in the box lots of different um, little holes for the different 
and Los Scarabeo said, no, 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 you're going to have one for the whole deck. You can't possibly have one for the Fool to the World, for each of the different court card families, each of the different minor. They said, no, that's too much. Uh, rethink that. Oh, so. <laughs> oh chill of joys. Because, like, um, oh, I dropped one. I've got the... I've got the eight to the seven. I've got the I've got the seven to the eight. I've got the eight to the nine, and I've got the nine to the ten of swords. So you see that progression mm-hmm. with them, and then when you get yes. to the, when you get to the ten, it cycles back round to the ace again, which is lovely, yeah. you know, because our hard times, our difficulties, although they f- can feel the worst in the world, and we've all been there. You know, it can get brighter. It can get lighter when we go mm-hmm. back around to the ace again because everything, even in our lifetimes, we have so many different cy- cyclic. Of course, moments. of course we do. And I think it's, I think that's the wonderful thing about tarot, the constant movement and the fact that, that one of its messages as we move through from the ace to the ten and, and you know, and the, the royals keep it moving is that we we can't get stuck. So, you know, when we when we hit the four and we're tempted to sort of remain in that safe space, we're told, no, you can't. You have to go to the five and go through that conflict. And that's what the night energy pushes us through yeah. that difficult time with the passion of, of whatever it is we're passionate yeah. about, depending on what suit we're in. But it's... I think the idea of the cycles is really, really important. It's a, it's an absolute primary message, isn't it? Yeah. And I think depending on which element uh, you're moving with, you know, it's kind of a lens on the, um, the, the primary element in your life. So I have got a lot of water. I always come back to astrology because it was my first love, but there, there's a lot of water in my chat. And you can tell that with me as well. So I've got a lot of Pisces. I have got a lot of fire as well, but I think the water tends to tends to take over. So if I was moving with um, miners through a lifetime, it would be the cups that would affect me the, the most deeply. Um, other people might have different elements. So you might have a few different elements that are very strongly. Uh, I'm not very grounded, you see. I do try my hardest, but like the the coins and the pentacles are a bit lost on me sometimes. But cut, I think yeah. maybe as 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 people who work in the esoteric field, our job is not to. I mean, we have to have one foot on the ground at least. But um, you know, I mean, I've always been told I was off with the fairies. So <laughs> just, I mean, I think it goes goes with the territory, doesn't it? Really. That's interesting what you say about one foot on the ground. So every time I sit somewhere, and it must look really weird to people, I always have one leg propped up like a like a stalk or like a flamingo. It's odd mm-hmm. with one foot on the, and that might be my lack of uh, lack of grounding, lack of earth. I'm refusing to put both of my feet on the floor. <laughs> I think that's fair. I once got told off in a meditation session. I was sitting with my back to a very big crystal in this particular room. And um, and I could feel this sucking sensation pulling me backwards. It was really disconcerting. And I'm in this meditative space going, oh. and I, <laughs> I keep on feeling like I'm being pulled backwards. And I wow. said to the the um, the person who was leading the meditation, and I feel like I'm being pulled. So she said, oh, Janice, she said, you're always off. You're always going up and you're not in control of your energy so she took the crystal and she gave me a big bit of hematite and told me to put my feet on it to keep myself stuck to the earth (laughs) i felt very told off (laughs) wow (laughs) well hematite being this really heavy it's a really heavy sort of apparently it's the heaviest of all of the the you know stones it's 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 the black it's very one. Very magnetic. It? Black one. Um, yeah. It's very black. Heck. I have to say, I really, really heartily disliked the feeling. So I surreptitiously took my feet off it when she wasn't looking and just sort of hid them. Which was the crystal was a horrible was sucking feeling. you in. 
the one at the well, back was sucking me in. When she'd taken that away, it was fine. So I, I really that? didn't need the hematite to pull me down to a pup. What was the, the crystal that was sucking you in? I don't know, oh, actually. I really don't know. Yeah. yeah, it was really odd. And and actually, I've, I've spoken to her since, and she said, oh, you know, we should have investigated that further yeah. because the crystal was trying to tell you something. It was something going on there. But yeah, it was a meditation session, and I, you know, I... I I, I have a I have a tendency to disrupt, so I have to try and <laughs> stay very good. <laughs> so yeah, so I mean, so you've you know you've you've been you've been working in tarot a long time, and how how do you feel that it informs your life on a on a larger basis? I mean, I know you're very busy with the you know, with the organizational part of Tabby and all of that energy, but on a personal level, how do you feel that tarot supports you or or not or whatever? Do you do you live it? Do you do you live through it? Absolutely. Yes. In in every different way. Um and, and as well I, I work at the festivals. So the festivals is when I do my readings. Um and I try not to um and not to do them for the public in between the festivals because it's draining. Um, however, I might change my mind about that this year. It's something that I'm thinking about. But I tend to have tarot cards everywhere. Um, and I'll go to them for advice or to work through a problem. Or, you know, if I'm doing some meditation and they just form part of my life. I couldn't imagine my life without them. And even I've got them digital now. So... Because I've got another deck out, it's an oracle deck, and I spoke to Nick Kellett, who was the the stand next to you at the um yes, at the summer conference. Yes, and he has taken my deck and made it digital. So I'll I'll just quickly show you. Yeah, deckable. So it's amazing. So even if I haven't got my cards with me, I've got a digital collection. Mm. And not just mine, I've got a few different decks. So um Hmm. I've got lots of different files open. Well, if I can't find it, I'll just explain to you about it. Have you got anything on Deckable? I have been meaning to give him a call. We we promised to speak afterwards, and I just I just sort of haven't. But I do. There's a with the life code. There's this. I think I I. Did the reading? I did the this spread when when I did the workshop for you guys um, earlier on in the year. Um, yeah. It would be a perfect, be a perfect computer reading. Oh, that's so pretty! Look at that. Isn't that I lovely? Ha I haven't got the um, the app on my laptop. And um, that's something I really should do, but I have got it on my phone. And what you do is when you when you buy it and it goes into your collection, um, you can actually just say, uh, stipulate, I want a one card reading or I want a three card reading. And then it'll pull you three cards and it'll move them around the screen, show you the back, show you the front and then show you the, the part of the book as well. And you can mix it with all these nice. other cards as well. So um, amazing. It, it's fabulous, yeah. It's a real novelty, and I think that is the way forward for um for us tarot card uh, oracle deck creators. Um, and yes, especially as we yes. move into, so I I I don't use AI art. Um, I work with my dad, who's a graphic designer, but I know mm. other people who are creators in the tarot world that are using AI to create decks now. Um, and I think that's going to become. Will be, won't they? Uh, yeah, I think that's going to become more and more of a of a thing as we go forward. Um, which has its pros and cons, but you you can't ignore it. It is a thing. It's going to become bigger. Yeah. So no, it's um, going to become much bigger. Yeah, yeah. So loads of changes for us I think in the oracle and tarot deck community but like even yes. just the fact that we're all over social media I mean that wasn't a thing 10 years ago was it um, no no absolutely no. I mean it's it it, it it it's a hell of a thing though to have to keep pace with it all I personally find it quite 
quite is. challenging. I mean, you know, I, I enjoy making videos and I enjoy the YouTube thing, but I do find the Instagram side of it a challenge. I shouldn't say that, should I? But I do. It's a shame because the algorithm's gone on Instagram. So whereas you used to be able to use hashtags, and if if you're a creator and you're making money off your tarot decks and everything, you want to grow your um the the your following. Um, and it's incredibly difficult now. But a few years ago, um, you were able to grow. Um, it's impossible to grow now unless you throw money into the advertising side of things. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So that has become more difficult. Um. Yeah, it's it is. It is difficult, and certainly they're two very different jobs, aren't they? You know, to being a being a reader and being a you know being someone who actively engages with clients, and then being a deck designer, and you also wear a third hat as well. You are truly three of pentacles in one person, um, doing your um, organizational work for um for tabby as well so how on earth do you keep it all going um like the two of pentacles so i am i'm gonna open my laptop up after this and continue to work because we've got the midwinter conference coming up and um these other duties that i need to do and, and then we're still doing things around the agm so it's, it's just non-stop and I tend through the day to have my day job doing the analysis work and then I've got a second laptop with the tabby stuff on and I'm kind of <laughs> like that on two laptops. It's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, yes, okay. sometimes I need to remind myself to give myself breaks. Um, that is important. But because it's something that I love, it doesn't always feel like work. Um, I love the tarot world. I love the tarot community. I love the tarot people. I love tarot cards. Um, so it makes sense that I was always going to end up where I am. And I was the weird yeah, kid at course. school as well. I like to say weird with a Y. <laughs> <laughs> Unique rather than odd. Yes. But of, odd's good as well. Of I course. like being odd. Um, but yeah, the weird well, kid yeah. At, at, at school. Um, I'm quite proud of that title and even more proud of it now because I turned into the weird adult and I'm glad. <laughs> that has to be, though, doesn't it? I mean, for for those of us and, and I, too, you know, it was always a little bit of a little bit on the outside of things. And, um, you know, we 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 never quite mesh in with with, the you know, with the, the normal side of things in crowd and, and I, yeah <laughs> no, no it doesn't it doesn't work somehow um but I think there's something I think it's it, it's hard when you're at school I think it's it's easier when you get to be an adult and you kind of know more who you are but but you know at school when you when you a bit of an oddity and you you know you're in in your own head and you just you think well why is everybody why is everybody like this and why am I like this it's kind of yeah. a bit of an it's a it's an odd thing but you know I think it's 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 necessary isn't it because otherwise we you know this is weird I mean tarot is weird yeah I mean, it is you know it's it's normal for us but it is weird to be fair yeah it's different it's out of this world literally isn't it um mm -hmm. and if it's not something that you can touch um see and feel most people tend to freak out so um, I, I just I've never been a big fan of things that I can touch see and feel I like the unknown what lies on the other side mm -hmm. um what's behind the door <laughs> there must be something yeah. else out there and there is um, and I'm sorry it, about that. it is endlessly fascinating. I mean, it never stops kind of finding it, finding new levels of of um, interest within it. Yeah, seems it's like a kaleidoscope, isn't it? It just keeps on going, and you think, well, they, this must be it. But no, nope, there's always more. It always expands just that little bit more every time. Absolutely, and um, yeah. So I, I, 
I did become the in-between tarot because I'm about spaces, um, about what making connections, um, what's the next step, you know, how do I get from A to B and the cycles, what lies behind the next life. So yeah, I, I fell into the in-between tarot and, um, and it's then become my identity, which, um, yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. It, it's become me. Absolutely. Um, what's what's next then because obviously you know you're that's a big deal and and that's so you what do you what do you think what creative project is calling you is calling you now well I did my master's thesis um, in psychology in 2000 and I think I completed it in 2018 or 2017 anyway I um, did my thesis on um, tarot is a tool for counselling. Um, mm. So what I would like to do is I would like to develop that into a book. So I've already um, put something together uh, of what I would expect for the chapters. So I really need some quiet time in my life to be able to work through it and put together. And um, that's not happened this year. <laughs> I've spoke to you separately and like my life's been a bit chaotic this year. Um, but my plan is to um, settle down and do that because that'd be a nice big chunky book, um, and I need to reference lots of um, different authors as well. Um, and there is another deck that I want to produce. There is an artist that I'd like to approach. I've got a concept in mind which I can't reveal yet, but it will be another oracle deck. Um, that is still a little bit up in the air as well but that will be a project and just just explain explain to people who who are watching explain the difference between tarot and oracle so how would your oracle deck differ to your tarot deck so the tarot deck is a set system it's got 78 cards it's got the four elements in it and it has a structure so your minor cards your day-to-day -day, um events energy and then your major cards which are your big life transforming spiritual influences and um, the court cards which are the levels of energy that sit behind it and also the personality types but the oracle deck is a, a lot more fluid you can have any number of cards, surprisingly enough. It doesn't have to be 78. You could have 44, like mine. You could have 50. You could have 60. You could have 10. There are some Oracle card decks out there with 10 cards. Um, and it can be based around any concept. So mine's got a lot of Reiki in. Um, has astrology in there as well. But um, it's got heavy Reiki influence um, because I do Reiki. It's got the chakras in there. Um, and, and other people may have different ideas for their oracle decks. Some of them will concentrate around the divine feminine. Um, others will be concentrated around Wicca and witchcraft. So you could pick a concept and have that as mm. your oracle cards. Decide how many cards that you're going to do and have a different um, yeah. energy for each card. I think that you can be a lot more free and creative with yes. oracle card decks because with the tarot, although you can put your stamp on it, like I have with the cycles, the in-between tarot concept, you still have got a, um, a template to work to, haven't you? So mm. you can't go too wildly off it um, because then it wouldn't be a true reflection of a tarot deck, if you see what I mean. You might think differently about that. No, no, I agree. I, I, think, um, I think the structure of tarot is pretty perfect really and it, it it does its job so beautifully well that it would almost seem a little sacrilegious to screw with it too too much um i mean you know the the actual baseline structure but yeah. um but within that um you know within that there is there is still a lot of scope for interpretation um many years ago I've, I've worked in music historically and I spent quite a lot of time in Nashville and there was this thing called the Nashville song and the Nashville song is a very, it's almost like a haiku. It's like a longer haiku. So it has a very, very strict structure to it. And, and it's, it's really interesting because it can sound really formulaic and a bit dull until you get one that is just perfect. 
and it's it's just it's just it follows the complete structure, but it just transcends it beautifully. So I think the thing is, what we're looking for in tarot is the same thing, aren't we? We've got lots and lots of decks that just follow the same thing, and then we're looking then we're looking for just get that that one that it's it's still built on the same framework, but it just transcends it, it just lifts it up to and 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 says something meaningful and different within the same structure but it doesn't matter because it just raises it it just brings it up to another level and that i think is that's that's beautiful yeah and like with mine for example i kept the correspondences in because they're they're very important so aries and taurus with the the hierophant and the emperor you know, it's, yeah. it's like, it's part and parcel, you know. it's it, Absolutely. It, yeah, it, 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 it That's drives and makes them tick. Yeah, huge influences. Um, so yes, um, yes. Those correspondences are kept in because um, they're very important. Um, and you can play yeah. around with it a little bit more in the Oracle deck, I feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, it's quite interesting. I have to admit, I've never thought about creating an oracle deck, but you you make it sound like really good fun. I think it, it, is it would be fun. it would yeah. be quite it would be quite fun to do that. Yeah. So, are you going to give us a hint as to what kind of area? I know you say that you've got some reiki in there and things. So, or or is it is it under a dust sheet? We're not allowed to have a peek. It's a bit under a dust sheet, yes. Yeah, that's fair. I have got to be that's careful fair. because um, I like to pitch it to a publisher. Um, so I think when you're when you're doing that, they would expect you know that you haven't released yeah. anything in advance because <laughs> you you think you know it's a done deal. Well, um, dealing with publishers is a is another matter in itself. It's very mm-hmm. difficult getting a publisher and um, pitching to a publisher waiting to hear back from a publisher so um yes it's a you've got to be very careful with that process yes and, um, yes yeah. well that's that's fantastic so when are you when are you starting on this new on this new project then Janine I love that we're talking about it because it's pushing me to get a move on with my and I'm I'm, I'm next year I can't keep saying I'm so busy I can't start on it because then it'll never I'll never start it. So I'm hoping next year is the year that I can do those things. Yeah. yeah. This year I yeah. think it's been mainly yes. about Tabby. I mean Tabby's just yeah. taken over my life. It's been huge. <laughs> it is. My goodness. Yeah. I mean, do you how long do you I mean I that's probably an unfair question really, but obviously it, it is a huge um call on your time isn't it and obviously there are other things that also you want to do yeah do you do you see yourself are you is it is a fluid thing or do you think well I'm going to do this I'm not asking you to say but is it more of a I'm going to do it for a certain amount of time and then I'm done I'm going to hand it someone else can damn well do the hard work is it is, you know how do you do. how do you see it I think most people do um around two years in role but that does um that does depend as well because some people do longer some people do shorter I love the way that there's a real momentum with passing the baton in tabby so you know somebody says okay I, I need to uh, do stuff with my family now or um, I'm going off to have a baby who wants to take this um, wand somebody else will go oh I'll have a go at that and then they'll jump into role I've yeah I've seen lots of transitions like that over the last year and it's just been really exciting to see that people want to continue it going I mean it never gets to the point where the wheel falls off you know the volunteers just keep coming because there's such a love for them for the material and for the 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 ethos of it so yeah I really do like that yes. side and you are pushing for modernization and yeah innovation and you've got lots of ideas trying to sort of get it you know get it onto the next cycle maybe that's that's what your vision is yes so I'd love to incorporate an awards um side of things with Tabby as well where we're judging on um, different tarot cards we've got something in the pipeline so um that's just being finalized or um decided on at the moment 
Um, we're at a one day conference at the moment for the summer conference, but I'd love to go to a two day conference. But all of these things need to be put to a vote. Um, and that goes in at the annual general meeting. So that's where we are at the moment. We're a democracy, which is great. Everybody gets to vote on things. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's very democratic. So. Wow. So how many members do you have now? We've got, um, we've got over 500. Less than 550, over 500, somewhere in the middle. Okay. Yeah, so it's quite big and it's growing. So it's becoming more international now. Um, people are joining from overseas, um, from the States. Got people in Australia, people all across Europe. So it's lovely. It's not just situated here. It's everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah, we're a global organisation. Right? Yeah. Well, that's that's great. Well, it was really lovely to speak to you. And thank you for showing us and telling us all about your deck and your plans to come. Sounds wonderful. Oh, thank you very much. And thanks for inviting me on. I really enjoyed that. No, it was yeah. great. It's really interesting. And I'm, I'm, you know, I just want to try and introduce as many different people as possible to the channel. It's good to kind of you know, spread it around, and and so it's not just it's not just my face on the screen all the time. <laughs> so and that's not that's a bad great. thing. I well, no, but still, <laughs> you know, enough is enough. So, so. And we're looking forward to Variety. having you on our channel as well on the um, uh, midwinter conference. You're going to do something yeah, yeah. lovely. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I shall, I shall put something together. Absolutely. Excellent. Oh, thank you, darling. Thanks well, that's great. Me. Well, you know, I really, I really appreciate it. And you know, if anybody wants to find out more about Tabby, um, or about your decks or whatever, where should they look? Where do you want to direct them to? So I'm in between tarot on um, all across social media actually. So Facebook, Instagram. Uh, even TikTok these days, uh, Twitter. Yeah, so um, in between Janine or um, in between Tarot, and that's where you can find me. I, the the decks, the in between um, 78 card deck is available on Amazon, um, and that's with the publisher Low Scarabeo. But my Oracle deck, uh, which is what I shared the screen for before, um, you can contact me, and um, I've got I've got physical stock or it's it's digitally available um via uh, nick kellett's site which is deckable mm -hmm. um yeah right. all right Lovely. oh and tabby oh sorry well, uh, Tara, oh, and so tabby yes, yes we get tabby yes. t-a-b-i and we're all across social media as well so um it was a, a british-based tarot association but we're extending outwards now and we're taking members from all around the world um so yeah if you would like to join a tarot association we are a, a big friendly one and we do two conferences as well every year and we do training courses now as well which run for uh, eight weeks for a beginner's course and intermediate um courses as well so come and join right. us all right lovely all right. Well, thank you, Janine. So I'm going to say goodbye to everybody and um, I will see you again soon. Thank you. Absolutely. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. See you. Bye, everyone.